Um, my name is Billy McWilliams. I'm the donut guy's brother. <laughs> I've uh, run this kitty, uh, you, but 45,000 vibrators, you think that would be worth something. Uh, I've owned um, Erotique for about seven and a half years. It's, it's a privilege. It's really fun. When Miss Kitties first came in, it was a huge debate. If you were ever there, we filled the Wilson Auditorium. There's a huge debate. You'd think um, it was clean, but it was a really interesting. When you read the emails, or excuse me, read the letters to the editor and you read the stories, people had permission to say vile things about other people. It was not a happy experience. But you also saw something that I found fascinating, and that is people spoke their values. They spoke the truth. And you know, it, it ended up, people spoke for, for freedom and communication. Miss Kitties was started by Father John Bauer. He was a gay Catholic priest. He was also a convicted pedophile. <laughs> he died in prison, and he took sex sexual liberation too far. He, he had two cats. One was Miss Kitties. The other was called uh, Fellatio. <laughs> uh, uh, here's me in 1984. Um, please notice the push-button phone, uh, the, the eight-millimeter film, uh, that was a long, long time ago. Um, it, 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 it's so great to watch the way the world has changed in this time. Um, so I started as a, a manager, and then I started selling the uh, Love You Inflatable Sheep. Uh, I sold one today, it was great. Uh, 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 I sold 100,000 of them, including sheep to Australia, right? <laughs> Who doesn't love sheep? <laughs> But there's a dark side to sexuality, and I think that really showed up a lot in the 80s and 90s. Uh, HIV killed tens of thousands of people. And I think when you look at the response, when you look at the, the AIDS coalition, and you look at um, people responded to that, and they humanized that, and they brought the quilt to town. And when you look at this image to your bottom left, Sally Jo Clausen was a Montanan in that picture who died of HIV. And the quilt brought this images to people understanding the real people who died of HIV and AIDS. It humanized that. And again, Judy Shepard came to town in 2000, and she talked a lot about on her son's birthday because of an anti-gay episode at MSU. And she talked a lot about, and she said to me, Bozeman is Laramie, and the world needs to change. And it has. So, and then you talk about a gay pride march in 1997. You can see the dialogue and the communication and the dehumanization of people that allowed people, thousands of people, to die. The dialogue has changed. It changed because the internet. Everything changed. When you saw that happen, that created new groups of people, new ways of communicating, normalizing sexuality for people who don't necessarily understood that. So communication got better. Uh, new organizations came up like PFLAG, like Pride, like the AIDS Network. All this work humanized people who were marginalized in our society and they, and, and they built and they built and they produced new ideas and new people and they said, this is unacceptable to dehumanize people and allow them to die. You see that in cultural institutions like the drag show. And you see that in terms of transgender communications. It's like, and what people don't understand, I think, is you find out it's okay to be different and it's okay to be you. And if you treat yourself better, you treat somebody else better. This is a recently, a month ago, this costume is entirely of, of, of condoms. And it's, <laughs> it's great, even the wings, she's fabulous. And this was done by MSU Health Promotions and it promoted self, safe sex and healthy sexuality. You can see the world is changing. So all of a sudden, you talked about something that was evil and wicked and degrading and, and vile and all those things that you read about in the times of doing it. And all of a sudden, now it's changing into health and communication and, 
and and uh, intimacy and honesty. And it, it's it's funny. It's changes. The world is changing. And now you're looking at somebody like the mayor. Thirty years ago, the mayor was saying, "I can't believe we have this in our community." And now all of a sudden, you know, our current mayor is saying, "Hey, equality is okay." And in a month, right? And in a month, we're probably going to have America equality nationwide. So you can see that, there, well, mostly there's a change, right? <laughs> Other than the little flashy, you know, <laughs> things. But it's been a big difference, you know. That it's, it's fun to watch the world change. And I feel honored to be part of that great process. And you can see how it's changed in terms of what, what we've done is it used to be that DVDs and magazines were 30% of ourselves, and that's just five years later, it's completely the other way around. So it used to be more male-centric. No, it's never been a better time to be a woman. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a, and this is, a, I just wanted to show somebody a picture of my heart on, right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, th thank you. Uh, the world is a better place. And here's a few things I've learned. In 30 years in a sex store, most people are normal. And most people feel guilty about being normal, and they shouldn't. Repression causes many pro more problems than expression. Sex is always going to be controversial. And that women are leading the sexual revolution. Thank you.